Let's consider an example that shows how Moore's circle works. So we need to know what our stress state is, and we are going to assume that our stress state is the following. Sigma 1, 1 is 500 MPa. Sigma 2, 2 is negative 100 MPa, so that means it's a compressive stress. And our shear stress is 200 MPa. And all of our others are zero. That makes it a little bit easier to deal with this. And so if we draw this stress state in this coordinate system here, we have a tensile stress in this direction. We have a compressive stress in this direction. And our shear stress is acting in this direction because that's the convention in uh, showing this, the stresses for shear stress. Let's take a look at how that would look then on the Mohr circle. By convention, remember, we have that the x-axis shows the normal stresses, so labeled here as sigma, and the y-axis shows the shear stresses, which I'm labeling here as tau. And so this is our first point that we would have plotted, and this is 500, which is sigma 1, 1, and then it's the negative value of sigma 1, 2 because of that convention that a shear stress that produces a counterclockwise rotation is plotted below here. So this is negative 200. So sigma 1, 1 and negative sigma 1, 2 in this particular case. This point here, this is at negative 100 on the normal stress axis and at 200, because this is sigma 2, 1, it produces that clockwise rotation. So we draw our two points, we connect them, we find that in this particular case, the center is falling right at 200, and we sweep out a circle, and this generates our Mohr circle. Let's look then mathematically at how we would find that center point, sigma average, and how we can find the radius of the circle, because that's going to give us our maximum shear stress and our principal stresses. Okay, so let's find the average stress, and we just find it as the sum of those two principal stresses divided by 2, and this mathematically tells us what we had already seen on the last slide, which is that our average stress is 200 MPa. We can find the radius using the formula given in the other video, so we have our shear stress squared, and we have the difference between our average stress and sigma 1, 1 squared, and this gives us a value of 360.55 MPa. Using those values, then, we can find the principal stresses. So to find the principal stresses because of how our Mohr circle works, we can find this basically as the sigma average plus or minus r gives the principal stresses. So in this particular case, we have 200 plus r, and we have 200 minus r, so our principal stresses are 560.55 MPa and negative 160.55 MPa. So we can take a look at those on our Mohr circle. So this Mohr circle now is showing our original points in red, and it's showing our principal stress state here in orange. So 
those are our principal stresses, and we can write that, the principal stress tensor. So we have only these normal stresses now, and all of our shear stresses are zero because these points lie on that axis. And really, this is an MPA. We always need to remember to label our tensor. Next, let's find the maximum shear stresses. So the maximum shear stress, essentially by definition, is equal to R, right? So on our circle, this is tau. Our maximum shear stresses are. However, in our maximum shear stress state, it's not the case that the principal stresses are zero. So if we look at our stress tensor for the maximum shear stress state, the shear stress is going to be equal to R, which is 360.55. Our other stresses are zero, as they continue to be. And then our principal, or our normal stresses, rather, are given by this sigma average. So these are 200 and 200 in both cases. And this is an MPA. And we can take a look at this graphically as well. So now here, the red Again, is the original stress state. The orange is the principal stress state. So no shear. And the blue is the maximum shear stress state. So the next thing that we're going to be interested in is finding what's the angle of rotation between each of these. So we've mathematically determined what are the principal stresses, but we want to know what is this angle here, 2 theta, that rotates this system so that there are no shear stresses. And then second, we want to find what's this angle, 2 theta, and we'll call this one 2 theta s since it's going to give us our shears, and 2 theta p for the principles, we want to solve for each of those angles. So we can start by doing this uh, using our equation that gives us the tangent of 2 theta p. So we know the tangent of 2 theta p is equal to sigma 1, 2, divided by sigma 1, 1 minus sigma average. And so this is 200 divided by 500 minus 200. And I'll just point out these 200s are different, right? One of them is the shear stress, and one of them is the center of the circle. So this is the tangent of 2 theta p. So we just do the arctangent we remember to, to divide by 2 in the end. We first find that 2 theta p is 33.69 degrees. We have to remember to divide that by 2, and we find that theta p is equal to 16.845 degrees. So this is telling us that on the Mohr circle, we have to rotate 33 degrees, but that sort of in real space, we have to rotate 16 degrees, and we're rotating this in a, a counterclockwise direction. Let's take a look at this. So on our Mohr circle, this is our two theta p rotation. And in real space, this is a rotation of theta p, right? And now if we remember our original stress state, so this is x1 x2, and we had 500 MPA here. I'm sort of drawing these arrows 
a little bit to indicate the magnitude of the stress. We had negative 100 MPa here, and then we had a shear stress of 200 MPa acting in this direction here. So our principal stress state tells us that there are no shear stresses at all, and so we found then that this is 560 MPa for the one and negative 160 for the other. And so this kind of makes sense. If we look at, at the arrows on the original stress state and we think about, you know, where would there not be any shear stresses acting? And we see then that the final, that the principal stress state sort of matches up to that. So let's look then at the angle for the shear stress state. And in this case, so we're now looking here. This is 2 theta s, and we can find theta s as just theta p minus pi over 4 in radians or minus 45 degrees, depending on which we're operating in. And so this gives us theta s equals negative 28.155 degrees, right? So, so that's why we're going the other direction. This is theta s. So if we do this again, so these are our original stresses. Let's just note our coordinate system. So the blue just represents a new coordinate system where the shear stresses are maximized. So in this case, we have some normal stress on each of these faces, but our shear stress is maximized. And we know which way to draw it because of the sign convention. So that wraps up this example. But to summarize, we had started with the stress state of 500, negative 100, and a shear stress of 200 MPa. And we were able to, we found both the principal stress state, the stress values, and the angle of rotation needed. And we were able to find the maximum shear stress state. I did not present the original equations here or the derivations for them, but those are found in the Moore's Circle explanation video. I hope this example was helpful.